personally, I think that long YouTube introductions are the dumbest thing in the entire world. So in this video, I'm going to do exactly two things. Uh, number one, I'm going to show you from beginning to end how to set up your very own Feed the Beast Ultimate Reloaded modded Minecraft server on Linux. And second of all, I'm going to shamelessly plug the set of modded Minecraft servers that I have set up on my hardware uh, that you can join at any point in time. They'll be up and there's going to be information for that in the description below. Since this video has no sponsor, I wanted to take a quick second to tell you a little bit about a project that I've been working on. Every single video on my YouTube channel that has done even remotely well has either been centered around my home lab or around Minecraft. And because of that, I started thinking, what could I do to combine these two subjects and provide something to you, the viewer, that would actually be valuable? The more I thought about it, the more I realized that it could potentially be relatively difficult for somebody to run both a dedicated server and the client side of a mod pack at the exact same time. And so I realized I already have the hardware thanks to my home lab to be able to run a whole bunch of these servers at the same time. So why not set them up and just let you guys use them? I currently have my main vanilla server and 15 modded Minecraft servers up and running right now. But by the end of this, I plan to have well over 150 total servers running at once. The goal of this project is simply to allow friends to be able to play with each other on a server without one of them having to take the incredible performance hit of actually having to run that server for themselves. Again, this is totally free, so please feel free to share the server information with whoever you think might actually use it. Okay, back to the video. Step number one in setting up any modded Minecraft server is downloading the server files. Now for Feed the Beast Ultimate Reloaded, the easiest way to do that is just to open a web browser and search for Feed the Beast. Now on Feed the Beast website, you can click on the second link here that says Mod Packs, and that'll take you straight to feedthebeast.com forward slash mod pack. Now once you're here, you have to scroll down uh, to the search bar and you can search for Feed the Beast or search for Ultimate Reloaded. Once you find that mod pack, click on it, scroll down until you see this little box here that's called server files. This is what we're gonna click to download the server files. Uh, for our particular case, we're gonna be using Linux, so we're download that. And this is gonna download an installer for the server. Now the next thing that we have to do is install Java. In order to do that, we're gonna open up a terminal session. Now, Feed the Beast Ultimate Reloaded uses Java 8, so the command we're going to be using is sudo apt-get install openjdk-8-jdk. Now, it's going to ask for your password, and then it's going to ask to confirm the amount of space it's going to use. Now, from here, it'll take care of the rest of it, and it'll install Java 8 for us. So, there's nothing else we have to do for Java. Now, while that's installing, I'm going to go ahead and create a file structure to put the modpack installer in. We're going to create a new folder. We're going to call it uh, ftb... And then inside of there, we're gonna cut and paste the server installer. So now once we have this here, we have to do a couple things. The first thing, we have to open a terminal session from inside this folder and make this file executable. And in order to do that, we just have to do a chmod plus x, and then we have to put in the name of the installer. So it, in this case, it is server install underscore 36 underscore 2052 hit enter on that and that changes the permissions we close out of that and now we can run the server installer now the server installer isn't quite downloading everything but it's downloading quite a bit of the stuff you're going to need uh, in order to run your server so just let it have its time it'll run and install everything uh, and then once it's done we can actually start the server for the first time all right, so once again, we're gonna open in terminal so that we have a terminal session from this folder structure, and then we're gonna do a dot backslash, we're gonna do start dot sh. And the first thing it should do is ask us to agree to the Mojang end user license agreement. You have to do this for every single server you do. So go ahead and select yes there. And then it should start to go through and actually install and start up for the first time the mod pack. Now, the first startup takes quite a bit of time because I mean, it's basically like a puzzle, right? The first step downloaded all the pieces and now it has to go through and try to piece them all together and make some sort of masterpiece, which is the mod pack, right? Uh, so it takes a little bit of time starting up the first time and it will take quite a bit of time every time after that. But the first one especially takes quite a bit of time. So while that's running, it will at some point add a server.properties folder, a uh, server.properties file in here for us. And once it does that, we're gonna make a couple adjustments to it uh, just so I can show you a few things there. All right, so it looks like the server has now started. We have a server.properties file in here that we're gonna adjust. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna change a couple of things. Max players, I like to set mine to 10 just because usually they don't have any more than 10. Your server port is important to note what it is. I'm gonna change it for mine. Wouldn't really recommend it for yours. Next thing we're gonna adjust is adjust the display name. 
We're gonna change that to this. It's customized specifically for the stuff that I use so that all of my servers look exactly the same. Uh, there's some different links online that I can put down in the description or if you ask about it, I can add for how to adjust these and make them look cool. So we should be good. Control save it, uh, close out of here. You can now go to the server inside of here, type in stop, it'll stop the server. Uh, that's the easiest way to stop it. And then from there, you just hit the up arrow and run the start.sh again. It'll start the server back up. And from there, you should be good to go. Now you have a server running, but what you don't have is really the ability to join the server from anywhere but your local home network. And in order to set that up, you have to set up port forwarding. I wish I could give you some simple like, hey, this is exactly how to do that answer. There's really nothing. Um, in order to set up port forwarding, you pretty much have to figure it out um, for your own router. So what I would recommend doing is either going to Google or YouTube and looking up how to set up port forwarding for the specific router that you have, follow those instructions and set it up for port 25565. Now, once you have port forwarding set up, you have it uh, where anybody on the outside can join your network as long as they know what your public IP is. So you'll next have to give your friends your public IP, which all you have to do to get that is go to Google and Google, what is my public IP? Copy that, text it to them, send it to them on Discord, whatever you need to do. That's what they'll put inside of their Minecraft in order to join your specific server. So there you have it. With port forwarding, you have a server set up and you have it where other people can join that server. Now, again, like we discussed earlier, if you run into any issues where your computer can't support the server itself and run the game at the same time, feel free to join the server that I have set up. This one that's launching right now will be the exact server that you'll be joining. Um, and, uh, and the link for how to get to that is in my Discord. You can find that in the description down below. Now, if you still want to set up one of your own and you have run into technical issues or, you know, you have some sort of problem, you can either leave a comment down in the description. I reply to all of those, or you can join my discord. There's an ask me questions, uh, text chat in there where you can ask me pretty much any question you want. Now you made it this far in the video. You might as well like, and subscribe. If you have any issues, let me know, and I'll see you guys in the next video.